So I have to uh, set up the scenario. So the scenario is your client uses QuickBooks Online and they run payroll not through QuickBooks Online, but they run, they run payroll through some other system, ADP, Paychex, um, some other system. And the big, the big feature deficiency that QuickBooks Online has is I cannot job cost my payroll. So the big criticism that QuickBooks Online has, I cannot job cost my payroll. So I'm going to show you a workaround that allows me to do so. Uh, but I want to do it on a sample file. I think it will be a lot easier on a sample file here. So let me Google QBO test drive and load up one of the sample files here. I'll click here. And um, I have to put, usually have to put like a six digit number there unless it will recognize it because I logged in not too long ago. Okay, so I'm going to do it on a sample file. So right now, uh, and just to kind of frame this, if I go to a profit and loss and I pull a profit and loss by customer, so I'm going to click on customize. See, that's what I like about the new redesigned reports that I don't have to click on this thing to then find it. But I'm going to do uh, columns here by customer and I hit run report. One of the big problems, uh, shortfalls that I have with QuickBooks Online is if I pull a profit and loss by customer report, I can get um, expenses paid to non-employees like a third party, a subcontractor. Uh, I can get those things to job cost into it, but I can't get payroll. Uh, to do it right, so that, that's the big problem I have that I cannot I cannot get payroll in here. So this is the workaround. First, we do a purchase order, okay? And this is gonna it's, it's gonna sound silly, but uh, the purchase order is basically going to be your timesheet, okay? You have to create your employee as a vendor. So I'm gonna call this one employee 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 one, okay? So this is my my employee that I'm gonna do job costing for. And usually the purchase order date, I use the, the payroll date. And then I create an item here, and this is the key component here. I'm going to create an item, and I'm going to call this allocated payroll. Okay? Okay? I'm going to call it allocated payroll. And then um, I usually create an item for each, em each separate employee because they have different rates. So I'm going to put here employee one, whatever it is. Uh, his uh, initials are. Under cost, I'm going to put my employee's cost, my, my, my rate, plus I'm going to impute all the taxes and direct payroll related expenses like workers' comp or whatever. So let's say that my employee actually gets paid uh, $25 an hour, but I'm going to add about, let's say I just have an add a standard 13% tack onto that. So I'm going to multiply that times. 1.13, and I'm going to get my what I call my new my new hour my new allocated payroll cost rate. Under expense account, I'm going to create an account. And that's an important thing too. I want to create a separate account. Um, I should have done this uh, before doing that, but I, I want to create a separate account called allocated payroll expenses. So I'm going to leave it in purchases for now, and then and then move it afterwards. So I'm going to hit save and close here. And then one thing I should have done before doing this, and I, which is create that account, so I'll do it afterwards. And then for this allocated payroll, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and copy this uh, seven times, right? Because this is just to emulate a, a, um, a timesheet. And then I'm going to, it seems like a lot of work now, but I'm just going to save it afterwards to make it recurring. So I don't really have to do that work uh, later on. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these here. Okay, there's my, my seven for my seven days of the week. And I always have to do my, my very last one. And the very last one, I'll put uh, total as negative. And trust me, this is going to make a lot of sense, <laughs> but you kind of have to follow the steps here. So I'm going to do total as negative, t negative, negative here. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and make this recurring. That way I can use it later. So I'm going to call this timesheet PO. Okay, and then I'm not going to schedule it. I'll make it on schedule. That way, it's just sort of safe there forever. So anytime I need to enter "quote unquote" my timesheet for my employee that I need to job cost their payroll, I'm going to go into I forget if it's here or it's actually here. I'm going to go to recurring transactions, and then I'm going to pull my my timesheet for this employee. I click on use, and it'll pull up that that PO that I created for, again, for my employee. And then I'll put the hours, right? So let's say this is zero, and this is eight, and this is seven, and this is nine, and this is seven, and this is eight, and this is zero, okay? So this is the total number of hours that my employee worked. And just to simplify things, let's say my employee only works for one customer a day. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the customer that they worked in, right? So again, this is to emulate 
a timesheet in which my employee is tracking how many hours they're spending on, on whatever customer, okay? And then at the very end, I get a total, and let's say that total is 1,130. That's the total payroll uh, expense that I'm going to job cost. But I'm, what I'm gonna do this time around here where it says rate, I'm gonna copy that number, and this should be pretty easy to, to have your client do. Just copy the number from here and then put on the rate negative one, that way it zeroes out. So the PO itself is set up to job cost and zero itself out, and I'm gonna click on save. Okay, and then basically that was my timesheet. Then I process my payroll normally. I go through ADP, I go through into a full service payroll. Whatever company you're using to process payroll, you're doing it outside of QuickBooks. But then to job cost this, I'm gonna go ahead and create, I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. I'm gonna go ahead now create the bill for this particular purchase order. So I'm gonna go to new and I'll go to bill. And then um, once I select my employee, which is employee one, I'm gonna have the little box on the right side says, hey, you already got an open purchase order for this one. This happens to be the purchase order in which we have our timesheet information. So I click on add all, and it basically creates a bill that job costs every piece of payroll uh, into a particular job, and then it, it sends it back out. That way it doesn't affect my financial statements in any way. So when I'm looking at my P&L uh, completely collapse with no uh, customers, Sorry about that. When I see my P&L completely collapse with no customers, it, it shouldn't add or remove anything on my on my profit and loss. Um, okay, I did forget one thing. I have to make sure that I go to my chart of accounts and I create that account called allocated payroll. So let me create a, a cost of goods sold account and I'm gonna call this allocated payroll. And then I'm gonna make sure that those items that I had posted to that, so let me go into my products and services, and that item called allocated payroll should also be, let me edit here, should also be hitting that allocated payroll account, okay? And again, this is just a bridge account. It, it, this account is really not going to uh, add, add or remove anything on a regular P&L, so I'm gonna look at my regular P&L here, and I'm gonna do it all dates and click on report. So when I look at my P&L, uh, the allocated payroll is zero. Right, it's zero, it doesn't affect my P&L, my, my net income should be the same as it was before. If I actually click on that, I can see the history and I can see a bunch of negatives and positives coming into it, but this is the value that it has. When I look at my P&L, then by customers, I'm gonna click on customize and then do total by customers and click on run report. Now you're gonna see the allocated payroll, let me zoom this in a little bit. Now you see allocated payroll has dollar amounts associated with each separate customer. And when I scroll all the way down to the right, and these are obviously every single uh, expense by customer here, um, I, I see a negative 130, uh, negative 1,130 on their unspecified, uh, which basically <coughs> renders a zero. And then at the very end, uh, my profit and loss is really not affected by, by, by this number. This is just for individual, uh, job costing purposes. Now, again, if I wanted to have a, a report uh, that, that is my detailed profit and loss by customer, I can sc scroll all the way down and click on the net income, for example, for this customer here called Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So I'm gonna click on that. And then this is what I call my profit and loss detail. So I, I can do a lot of job, again, it's not as powerful as QuickBooks Desktop because I can do the estimates item level versus actual, but it's pretty, it could be pretty powerful even to be able to allocate any indirect expenses or payroll for this matter. So at this point, I save the report, and then I can just call this one uh, P&L Detail Amy's Sanctuary, right? Whatever, whatever it happens to be, save it, and then that's already part of my save report, so I could always take a look at my profit and loss detail report by customer. Okay. So that was uh, that. Was that. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and show you another feature here, which is uh, something that QuickBooks doesn't have. QuickBooks doesn't have a um, expenses not assigned to jobs report. Again, an expenses not assigned to jobs report, something that QuickBooks Desktop can do. Um, so, um, so let me show you how I would do that. So to do that, I'm gonna actually go all the way to the right and look for this one called not specified. And then I'm gonna go all the way down and click on the net income button here. And I'm gonna click on that. And then <clears throat> this report contains every single expense that is not assigned to a customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Uh, I'm gonna call it 
I'm going to call it expenses not assigned to jobs. And I'm going to click OK. okay. And I'm, this is sort of my starting point. And then I'm going to click on customize. And then here it says distribution account, all income and expense accounts. Yeah, I don't need that. So what I need in this case is uh, all cost of goods sold, all, all, all expense accounts. I can choose either one. So I would have to have two reports, one for cost of goods sold, one for expenses. I'm going to click on expenses and click run. And then I'll save the customization again. And basically, in a nutshell, this is a expenses not assigned to jobs. There we go. And, and at that point, I can do other creative things, like um, like instead of grouping it by account, like in this case, these are grouped by accounts. I can group them by uh, by vendor or so, or something like that. And then you know, and then I'll do my job afterwards, which is you know make sure that these things get job costed afterwards. So I click on you know whatever the expense is, and then I realize, yep, I, I should have job costed this. And at that point, I select my customer job put it on Amy Sanctuary, and then I click Save and Close, and it should now go away from this report because it's no longer not assigned. So there, it's no longer there because it's no longer not assigned to a job. So that's how you do a expenses not assigned to a job report.